Hi, it's Ross here from Wizards Code. This is the second in a series of videos in which we're going to look at how to build a first person shooter in Unity using assets from the Asset Store in under three hours. The video that you're seeing right now is about what we're going to have at the end of the next video. In this video, we're going to start where we left off last time, and that looks something like this. We had our environment up and running, but we didn't have any enemies in here. So this video will finish with this, and this does have enemies in it. That's the major difference here. At the end of this video, you will have a playable game. It should take you about an hour to work through. I've fast forwarded through a few pieces in this video, but the whole thing will take you about an hour real time. So good luck. Let's get going. The first thing that we need to install is Emerald AI. This is a really simple out of the box AI solution. It's pretty advanced, um, but you are quite limited in what you can deliver. There are other things such as Node Canvas, which is a behavior tree where you program your own AIs. This pretty much provides it out of the box. You just set up a few configurations and, and so you can be very quick getting up and running with this, which is what we want. It's a prototype solution. If you want really amazing AI, you're going to handcraft it for your game. But for prototyping, this can't be beat. Next up, we'll install Zombie Collection. Uh, this is a collection of seven zombies. They're great models. They look really good. They come with animations. Um, the animations are a little bit limited. They actually look great, but there's not such a big range of them. There's lots of repetition across the different models. But again, for prototyping, you're not going to get better value than this at $50 full price. These things often go on sale, so keep your eye on that. Um, this will get us going very quickly and we'll demonstrate what the game will be like with the zombie models in. So let's get that installed. All right, next up, we're going to create a scene in which we'll develop our zombies. So let's create a new scene and we'll call it Zombie Development. OK, let's open that scene up and we're just going to drop a plane in here to put our zombies on. Let's make that quite a bit bigger. 100 by 100 should be just about right once we've centered it. Excellent. All right, let's have a look at one of these zombies. We'll go for the zombie brute and let's pick the one handed guy, drop him into the scene. Uh, let's center him or reset him. There we go. And let's zoom right in here and have a look at him. He's a bit dark on this side. So let's go to the directional light and move that to about 140. There we go. Now we can see him better. Beautiful fella. So let's set up Emerald AI. We go to Window, Emerald AI, Setup Manager. Unpack the prefab for our zombie and then drag that object into the AI object. Now, when we imported Neo FPS, it set up a bunch of layers and tags for us. So for our tag, we're going to select AI. And in the layer, we're actually just going to go with default here. For our behavior, well, we want this fellow to be aggressive and everything else we'll leave as default. These are all documented pretty well in the Emerald AI documentation. So that's added Emerald AI to our character here, as we can see from this component. Click the Animations tab and then find the animations in the character pack that we had. So we're going to go in here, find the zombie brute. Oh, hang on a minute. We need to lock the inspector over here so that we can navigate around. Here's the zombie brute's animations. So this is the idle animation. Uh, let's take a look at that. Let's open up a new inspector since we've locked the other one. There we go. And now we can view the animations as well as view the configuration. OK, so let's set up the idle animations, drag the idle across into the non combat. We're going to use the same one for the combat because we don't have separate animations. We do, however, have a look around. So in this top section, we're going to add the idle and the look around and the system will choose one of those at random when it's idling. And next up is movement. So ideally, we would have a movement for forward and turn left and turn right. But these models only have forward. So we'll drop that in and we'll use the same animation for the turn left and turn right. But for prototyping, this is going to look good enough and it'll get us moving nice and quickly. And we'll do the same thing with the run animations. So we'll drag the run forward into the run forward and the left and the right. 
Now we need the turn animations and again we have no turn animations. So we'll go down, find the walk animation again and we'll use those. Again, it's not going to look great, but it'll be good enough. Okay, so combat movement. Again, these models do not have any special animations for combat movements. So we're just going to use the same walk and run animations for everything as we did before. One exception is here, we'll, we'll make the walk animation play backwards when we're running backwards. Okay, so let's fast forward that until this section is set up. Next up is combat. So we'll select the combat tab and we're going to have two attacks here. Uh, because these models come with two separate attacks. Here's our first one and we'll drag our second one across. There we go. And next up we need to do our damage. Now there is a slot for damage with uh, in combat and damage not in combat but we unfortunately only have a single damage so we'll use the same one for both where is it oh here it is there we go all right so drag that into each of those slots and then the last one on this pane this tab is uh, the death animation so let's drag that in okay good and last up is our emotes we're not actually going to use this, but since the model does come with a scream animation, we're going to drop this into the emote and then it's ready if we want to use it in the future. So now we've set up the animations, we need to create the animation controller. So click the button and then I'm going to create a new folder, call it underscore Emerald AI. I'm going to put all my stuff for Emerald AI in here. Inside of there, I will create another folder called Zombie Collection. And this will be where I store the stuff for the zombie collection, I guess. And then inside there, we're going to name the controller. We'll call it um, Zombie Brute, because that's the name of this zombie. And now if we scroll back to the top of the Emerald AI system, we'll see this warning up here that says that we haven't yet set up the head transform and that we can do that in the detection and tag section. So let's click on that tab. Right, and in here we find the head transform. So we go to our model in the uh, inspector here and we navigate down into the hierarchy until we find the head. Okay, so we've reached the end here and I don't see anything called head. Um, so let's just navigate through here. That one looks like it's an eye. Perhaps this one, yeah, that looks like it might be right. Let's try rotating it. There we go. Yeah, that's the head. So let's rename that in case we need to find it again in some point in the future, head, and then drag that transform into the slot over here. Good. Now we can see there's another warning up at the top here which says we need to set up our factions and we can do that in this tag and faction options here. Scroll down, we don't want to have any companion set and in the detection layers we're going to unselect water and select character controllers and AI visibility. And that's all we need to do there. And we're going to go into factions and scroll right down to the bottom here and you'll find the faction relations. We're going to add option to that and it's already set up with undead and we're going to select friendly there. Um, now those factions are already set up by default in Emerald AI. It just so happens that there is an undead already there for us. Just one more thing here to do. Click the head look options and just say yes. That'll make the head look towards where the AI is going. Now we have one more warning at the top here. It says we need to set up our attacks. So click AI settings, make sure we have the combat tab and in the damage settings, scroll right down to the bottom. There's these melee attacks, add two in, select the two animations we added earlier on and decide how much damage we want. In this case, we'll go for between 15 and 30. We need to, oh, we want to be selecting by odds. So this will be an 80% chance and the next one we'll do between 30 and 50 and this will be a 20% odds. Um, those numbers, they can be whatever you want them to be. They're relative to one another. I just like to think of them in terms of percentages. It makes it easier in my mind. Okay, we'll test the AI in a moment, but first we're going to need a player in the scenes. Let's find our Neo prefab that we set up earlier and let's drag that into our scene. 
Now we're going to want to position that uh, in a, a, a different place from where the zombie is. So let's just move that back a little bit. So we're looking at his back. Now our zombie uses a nav mesh for navigation. So select the plane, go to the navigation panel, make sure the plane is walkable, then go to bake and click bake. That will create our nav mesh and we should then be able to hit play. Okay, so there's a couple of problems I see here. First, we're floating above the ground. And second, we have these errors about emerald attack events. We forgot to set those up, so let's fix those things. Let's do the nav mesh first. So select the zombie, go over to nav mesh in the Emerald AI and change the offset here to minus 0 0.08. Um, the reason I picked that is because I find it's fairly consistent across models. So that should work for the nav mesh. Next, we're going to do the animation events. Now to add these events to the animations, we're actually going to need to edit the animations, which we can't do because they're currently inside an FBX file. So highlight the animation in the FBX and hit Control D to duplicate and then do the same thing with the second attack animation. So now we have these two animations duplicated. We'll highlight those and drag them into our Emerald AI zombie collection folder. Okay, so now we have copies to work with. Let's go over to where those copies are. Uh, I like to keep things tidy, so I'm gonna create a folder for zombie brute, because as we do the other animations for all the zombies, we're gonna get multiple of these. So let's put them in a folder, great. Now, double click on uh, the attack one, and that'll open up the animation editor for you, which is this window here. Let's make it much smaller. We don't need to do any fine detail in here. And we also need to be able to see the animation in the inspector. So unlock it, because we locked it earlier. And now we can play the animation here. What we're looking for is the point of contact, which is about here and down at the bottom we can see it's on frame 25. So in the animation window go to frame 25 and add an event. Name that event Emerald Attack Event and this will be fired every time we hit that point and intercepted by Emerald to do damage. Next we're going to do the same thing with Attack 2. Find the first point of contact also at 25. So we add one an event in there we name that emerald attack event okay and then we need to go back to the animation again because if you recall this animation had multiple points of attack so we're going to come back round and there so that's frame 48 add an event call it emerald attack event and one last one, there are three points of contact in this attack, so let's go find the next one. Okay, let's have a look over there. There we go, let's just find the precise frame. I think about there, so it's gonna be uh, 78, 79. Let's pull up 79 and add an emerald attack event right there. Good. So now we have to tell our AI to use those animations. So in the combat animation tab, just drop our animations into the same place. We don't have to save the controller again, that'll happen automatically. Let's hit play. No errors down here, that's looking good. So let's see if he's gonna walk in his wander mode. Yep, there he goes, he's walking. Oh, um, so you see him snapping back there? That's because there is root motion on these animations. And we're using NavMess to control the uh, motions. So we need to duplicate the movement animations. So go into our original animations folder and highlight the walk and the run attack animations. So control D to duplicate that one and then the walk. So we now have duplicates of each of those animations. So we're gonna highlight those and drag them into our animation folder. And there we go. All right. Before we start editing, though, I just want to check something in the zombie. We're going to go to the nav mesh agent and just check that allow root motion is off, which it is in this case. So let's get on with editing. We go to our run attack and just turn off the root transform position for both of these on the X, Z direction. And as with the attack animations, we now need to tell our zombie to use that. So go to movement 
and then drag in our walk into each of the slots that uh, is necessary and run into each of the other slots. Don't forget to do this on both the combat and non-combat movement. Let's speed up the video while I just finish that little job. Now I've just remembered that our attack animations also have movement in them so we're going to do exactly the same thing for those two animations as well. We don't need to update the animation controller though because we are already using those animations. So let's hit play. So he's looking around. He should start walking in a moment. There he goes. A little bit of a slide when he steps off. We can tweak that at a later date. But he's walking okay. And he should, yep, he's stopped looking around. And then he should set off walking again. There he goes. All right, looking good. We can definitely improve this with some fine tuning on the animations, but looking good so far. However, I've just realized we put the wrong uh, prefab in. So we don't want the zombie player prefab. Let's delete that. Uh, what we actually want is the um, the prefab that will spawn our player, which is this one, Simple Spawner and Game Mode. So let's drag that one in instead. Uh, and that happens to have appeared at the back there. So hit play again. Okay, now we have our gun. Excellent. But we do have a problem. See down here in the console, it says there are two audio listeners. And that's easy to fix. Just take out the main camera because our player brings one with him. Next, we want to set up our AI so they take damage from the player. So let's select the model uh, in the scene. Let's just collapse these down a little, give ourselves some space to work in. We're going to add a couple of components here. Um, but first of all, we need to download them, actually. Um, so go to Neo FPS, Neo FPS Hub, and that will open up this window again. Go to Integrations, and the first one is Emerald AI. Click the GitHub link. And on there, you'll find instructions to how to install, but we're just going to go ahead and download the zip file from here. If you know how to use Git, you could always check out from Git, but we're going to download the zip file. And we'll save that into a temporary spot. There we go. And that will open up in a few moments. Okay, it's a little off the screen, but you can just see what I'm doing here. I'm going to unpack that zip file. I'm going to store that in a temporary folder too. And when that is complete, we'll navigate into the unzipped folder and drag that into our assets folder. So that'll unpack. And when it's finished unpacking and done its compile, you'll get this error. This is expected. Um, it is described in the documentation. Um, but what you need to do is essentially remove the original em uh, Emerald AI player damage component. So you search for that. Make sure you get the one that is in the original Emerald AI folder. There it is. And just simply delete it. There we go. It's gone. And now it'll recompile. And this time it will uh, compile correctly. So now we can set the AI up. First of all, we're going to add a Neo FPS Emerald AI Async Load Fixer, then Neo FPS Emerald AI Damage Handler, and then a simple surface, which is just a normal Neo surface. We'll make that flesh. All right, so that is it. Hit play. Now we should be able to shoot our AI. Ah, something wrong here. Let's have a look at that. Um, Let's go in. Everything looks fine here. Box collider looks okay. Ah, there we go. The box collider that Emerald AI put on was too small, so we've made it bigger. Uh, let's just make it a little bit wider as well so we can sit him, hit him sideways on. Okay, looks okay. Okay, good. And let's try that. Let's try shooting him. There we go. We died a bit quick. Uh, we forgot to set up his hit points. So if we now go into the Emerald AI system again, there it is, and click AI settings and go to stats, we can increase his health. Let's give him 150. And let's also have him regenerate over time, make him difficult to kill. Um, we'll do um, five points every second. All right, let's try that. Okay. 
Doesn't die instantly. Oh, he's running to attack us now. Perfect. Let's let him attack. Okay, he's too far away. And he's just killed us. Okay. Um, so he was too far away when he's attacking. So that's another setting. We go under the combat tab. And in here, we can change the attack distance. Let's drop it to two meters. And the too, too close distance is one meter. All right, so uh, we won't change the attack speeds or anything right now, but you might want to do those. Actually, no, let's do that. One and three is a bit slow. So let's say uh, 0.5. Let's round it down to 0 and 1. Um, and let's try that now. Okay, we hit him. He comes towards us. That's better. He's hit, actually hitting us now. Maybe make it one and a half and we're dead. All right. That's looking good. So let's try that again. This time we'll kill him straight away. Excellent. So he dies. Good. So then we're going to try. Okay. <laughs> That's not good. He uh, comes back from the dead, which is not good for a dead zombie. So let's think this through. Why might that be happening? Okay. I think I know what it is after putting some thought into this. I think it's that the death animation is actually on a loop, which seems kind of strange. So let's have a look at that. We'll go into the animation we're using and sure enough, it's in a loop. Okay, so we need to duplicate that, control D. And then copy that into our animation folder so that we can turn off the loop. Let's select it in our version here, turn off the loop and then make sure that our zombie is actually using that animation click animations tab go to death animation and just drag it into that slot there let's try that out let's shoot him he dies and he stays dead excellent all right so our first zombie appears to be done let's create a prefab by dropping him into our zombie brute folder and there we go. Well, we're going to need a lot more zombies than that. So I'm going to make a load more off screen. They're going to be exactly the same process. So I'm just going to repeat everything except the errors, of course. And we'll be back with a horde of zombies very shortly. <laughs> Okay, so now we're back in the scene that we created in the first episode of this tutorial series and we're going to add our zombies into this scene. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a spacer and we'll put all our zombies under that later on. Um, let's navigate to where our zombie prefabs are that we've just set up. And there we go, we see them all in here. We'll start with the zombie brute and we'll just simply drop a few of them into the scene. So just drag it into the scene and drop it into a random place. I'm not gonna worry about exactly where he is and whether it's a good placement for the game pacing and so on, not at this point. I just wanna see it working. So there he is in my scene. Let's zoom out and let's just drop a few of each of the zombie types that we've created uh, into various places around the scene. I'll fast forward the video while I do that. All right, so we have a whole load of zombies. Let's just highlight those and drag them to below our spacer. It just makes the scene hierarchy a little bit more convenient to navigate around. All right, so next up we want to set up the nav mesh. So go to the navigation tab and select the mesh renderers. And we're just going to go through and look at each of the categories of mesh renderer. And if we don't want the zombies walking on it, we're going to set it up as uh, not walkable. So we don't care about this axe, for example. Oh, it's this one. Let's double click on that. There we go. Uh, oh, that looks like it's an archway, a doorway. So we do want that walkable. Now, default is already walkable for these. So we only have to look for things we want to change. This is a bench. Um, arguably, we could have the zombies walking on it, but we're going to set that up as not walkable, not encourage them to climb on the furniture. So mark those not walkable and so on through all of the different groups of mesh components. Uh, one of the really nice things about these 3D Forge assets is uh, their naming convention is excellent. So it's really easy to do this job. Uh, it'll take me just a few moments. I'll fast forward and uh, we'll get on with it in a moment. Right, so now we're ready to bake the nav. 
So switch over to the bake tab and hit the bake button. After a short delay, a little bit of churning, we should have a baked nav mesh. Let's zoom out so we can take a proper look at it. Okay, well, we're not seeing it. That's because I don't have gizmos on. There we go. All right, now we see it perfectly well. Excellent, let's hit play. Go shoot zombies. Okay, it's working. We are shooting zombies. However, if you look down at the bottom here, you'll see there's an error on the zombie skeleton. So let's fix that telling us there's no hit animation. So we must have missed it when we were dragging in the animations earlier. So let's navigate to that in the inspector and find a missing hit animation. There we go. So let's drag that across and we're good. Let's hit play again and see if that error has gone away. And it has. Excellent. So now we have no errors. There's one warning. We'll worry about that later. Okay, so this is the version that we'll have at the end of the next video. So the differences are I've put some more atmospherics in, so you've got some zombie noises, you've got better um, weaponry, and you have uh, some fog and lighting effects and things like that. So this is coming soon. If you like this video, hit the like button down there. Give me a comment. Let me know why you do or don't like it. What would you like to see in future versions? Hit subscribe, you'll hear about the next version coming soon. Bye bye.